have a 3 8 go drill from Kenna Metal. Now these are awesome tools, but they're in a completely different category from this three and a half inch FBX drill we have here. When you start looking at the amount of surface area that's engaged in cut, a tool like this is gonna require huge amounts of torque. So we did all the calculations on how much horsepower and torque this tool was gonna to take, and we ended up doubling the feed from our previous video. That takes us from two inches a minute to four inches a minute. So at four inches a minute, we ended up being around 90 horsepower and about 350 foot-pounds of torque. Of course, Titan walked up and he said, nah, we're going six inches a minute. So I reran the calculations and that puts us at 130 horsepower and 450 foot-pounds of torque. Now that's almost 30% more than what this spindle's stated capabilities are. So at four inches per minute, I was already terrified because this is a huge drill and big inserted drills have always scared me. And now that we have so much torque and horsepower available, we'll be able to turn this whole cutter body into lava if anything goes wrong. So we're not just taking this tool down into the hole to the bottom of the flute. We're taking this entire holder and tool body assembly into the counter bore that we just end milled out. So everything we're doing with this tool right now, feeds, speeds, should be setting us up for failure. But we're gonna push it past its limitations and see what this thing is really capable of. I don't know if we're gonna stall the machine out or if it's gonna work, but let's find out. All right, we're going in with this drill at five times what Kenna Metal recommends for surface footage, so the sound may not be ideal. So don't rip me apart too bad in the comments. Now you might look at this tool and this machine tool and think to yourself, I'm running a desktop mill in my garage, I'm never going to have anything like that. But the truth of the matter is, in this industry, it's all about levels, and you never know where you're going to end up a few years from now. So we're not only teaching people on small machines, we're also teaching people on huge machines and huge cutting tools. So like I was saying earlier, we're not just gonna be going to the bottom of the flutes. We're taking this entire tool, holder and everything, down into this counter bore. So with tripling our feed rate, coolant's gonna play an absolutely crucial role in the success of this process. The added lubricity and chip flushing is going to be the one thing that will make or break this cut. There's no way we would have been able to make it through these holes without our Blazer Synergy 735. If you're running a tool like this yourself, I highly recommend using coolant. Alright, so what you just saw was probably the scariest thing I've ever had to push start on in my whole life. So I'm totally shocked that that actually worked. Everything on paper said that this should have failed, but it goes to show you that when you have beast tools and beast machines, you just might be surprised at how much of a beating they can take. And when you push the limits of what's actually possible, that little bit extra may just be enough to give you the edge that you need to be successful in your own machine shop. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll catch you guys again next week.